So today we're taking a look at the CMP 100-210's little brother, the CMP 100-200. Basically it's the same core, uh, it does have its own cooling fan built into it instead of passively cooled, but it only has 6 gigs of HBM2 versus the 16 that the uh, 210 has. So this is definitely going to not work as well on memory intensive algorithms because the bandwidth on the memory is cut down so much. What we can see right now, if I switch the screen, we are in Hive OS, and there's our CMP 100-200 doing 6.7 kilo hash on Dynex at 126 watts. So with that being said, let's switch on over to the spreadsheet and show you everything I did test on this. And yes, that's exactly what it looks like right there in the test bench. Uh, it has says Titan on it. It's got a blower style fan on it. It's gold. Um, yeah, they're about 150 if you can find them on eBay. But I think they're pretty much sold out already. So we tested, started with Flux. I always got to start with Flux, even though I really don't care for Flux anymore. It's Oval Boris thing. And I always harassed him, always spending too much time testing Flux. So that's why I still start with Flux, just for him. Um, we can see most of the clocks that we're doing on the core clock is 11.10 or 13.05. We're turning the memory uh, plus 300 or just regular zero. That's all you can get out of HBM2 memory, at least for this setup. Everything was the same. So we tested those four iterations, except for Dynex. We threw an extra one in there because it was actually worth it. It wasn't worth it for the rest of the algorithms. So for Flux, running regular one... 1110 core, 300 core offset, and 300 plus 300 on the memory offset. Got a 73.26 souls at 137 watts, and it's also the least efficient version using Mini Z version 2.4D. The best one was actually when we cranked it up and we were doing 84.5 souls at 148 watts, running a 1305 core clock and a 300 offset both for the core and the memory got us to 0 0.57 efficiency not bad next one is nexa uh worst was actually when we got rid of the memory so that was the worst so we went from 83 to 82 honestly nexa is a core algorithm so that's why there's such a small jump when we slowed down the memory on this now, our, of course, our best was when we uh, clocked the core up higher because it's a core algorithm. We got 96 mega hash at 175 watts running a 1305 core with the core and memory offset of plus 300. Although, at the same time, it kind of had the worst efficiency, but the gap is so small, it doesn't really matter that much. Now, Kapow, yeah. I Anyone who knows me, I try to steer away from Kapow, but it's good for testing regardless. So our worst was when we cut the memory off because Kapow does use both core and memory. So when we cut off the plus 300 on the memory, we dropped from 40, oh, practically 44 mega hash down to 37. Uh, our, although, which is kind of funny, this one right here had our best efficiency, just running the 1110 core. Uh, best hash rate was when we cranked everything up to 1305 on the core with the two plus 300s. But it was kind of in the middle. Radiant, as far as I know, is a core algorithm. So the numbers are kind of weird. Like if we did the 1105 core with a plus 300 on both, we got 958 mega hash at 115 watts. 115 watts on the uh, bench lab itself. Software was reporting a little bit more, like 116, 116 and a half. When we dropped off the memory, power stayed the same. Um, Mega hash dropped a little bit and kind of put it in the middle. It wasn't really that efficient. It wasn't really that non-efficient type of deal. Um, then the last two, when we brought the core up to 1305, whether we had uh, no extra memory core offset or adding the extra 300, we got the same uh, mega hash limit. So we hit a limit somewhere, a bottleneck. I'm not sure what it was, but they got the same best hash rate, but worst efficiency. But again, still, our best efficiency was 8.33. Our worst is 8.15. There's not a big spread there. These cards, these CMP cards, have a very finite window where they like to ride. And anything outside of that, it either just falls on its face or just burns extra wattage. 
Now here's the only algorithm where it was actually advantageous to push the core a little bit higher and you got good returns on it. So for Dynex, running fairly conservative. 1105 plus 300 on core in the memory gives our best efficiency at 0 0.058 at 5.93 kilohash. Taking off the memory, because you do need the memory clock for Dynex, uh, dropped us down to 5.24, so that's the worst there. Running 1305 without the memory was definitely our worst efficiency, but still not that bad. Again, it's a very small spread. Then we also cranked it up 1305 and then plus 300 on the memory and core. Our efficiency is pretty good. It's at, um, what would that be? That would be the equivalency of 55 hashes per watt. Is that how it works? But 0 0.055. And that got a 6.27 kilo hash. Now, if we cranked the core actually up to 1500, we gained what? 12, an extra 17 watts. But we went from 6.27 kilo hash up to just over 7, 7.03 kilo hash. And the efficiency was right there at 0 0.054. It's running right in the middle of the gang. So if you really want your Dynex, you can push this card a little bit harder and actually get a good return on it. It's not just going to burn extra power and give you nothing in return. Ergo, this card's pretty good at Ergo. Not quite as good as the CMP210. Base clock, plus 300 on both, 156.5 mega hash at 120 watts. If we cut off the memory, we're down to 104 watts, but we're also down to 119 mega hash. Because Ergo definitely likes its memory. Now, if we go up to 1305, but leave the memory off, yeah, nothing really changed. Again, Ergo is more of a memory intensive algorithm. But when we bring the memory back, we jump up to 156 again. So we were kind of hitting a bottleneck. It's kind of interesting that this one's actually slightly more efficient at the 1305 than the 1110 but we're literally talking about a two watt difference right now wait 120 no 127 don't ask me why it's actually more efficient or you get this sorry hold on it's not efficient you get slightly more hash rate you're getting from the core 0.2 mega hash that's it that's why it's green it really shouldn't be green but it's green but we were basically hitting a wall here because it didn't really matter where the core is. I could probably could have actually dropped the core a little bit more before it starts affecting the memory bus bandwidth. And we might have been able to get it a little bit more efficient now that I think about it, but yeah. So leave the core at 1110, 300. That's your best efficiency at 1.315. ETC hash goes up to its name. It's an 81 mega hash card. And everyone knows ET hash, ETC hash, how that works. That's both as well core and memory um, running at 1110 and plus 300 on both 142 watts got us 81.76 mega hash drop off the, uh, memory and we're down to 67.85 but we also save like 20 watts roughly um, kick up the core but no extra memory and we're still in the same boat we're still just shy of 68 but you bring them both back up and we're at 81.91 mega hash. You get the highest hash rate. It's actually not the worst efficiency though. And again, here on these type of memory dependent algorithms, we're getting almost the exact same hash rate between running the core at 1110 or 1305. 8191 versus 81, that's 76. It's practically nothing. And we're going from 142 watts to 145 watts. It's, it's almost coming down to the point of uh, it could be just error from testing and testing. It, it's so close. So just run it at the lower speed if you're going to do ETC hash with these cards. And finally, Zell's hash version 2 is definitely memory dependent as well. Uh, if we do 1110 with plus 300, you get 26.31 kilo hash. Kill off the memory down to 22.67 kilo hash. That is the worst hash rate on here. Uh, kick up the core it actually helped a little bit we got back up to 23.42 and kick up the core plus the memory offset gets us 27.36 at 111 watts 
So, honestly, is it really worth it to go from 26.3 kilo hash to 27.36 by adding an extra 12 watts? I think Zell's just run it at the bottom, because that seems to be the most efficient, too. So, this GPU was on loan from Zapirate. Thank you very much, Zapirate, for allowing me to uh, torture your GPU before we uh, send it off to its final home. If anyone wants uh, any other current coins tested in the future, let me know, and I will expand this spreadsheet out and add on more algorithms and do more testing for you guys. Also, this spreadsheet will be available down in the video description off of uh, Google Sheets. You can view it. You cannot modify it, but you can check it out, make copies of it, do whatever you want. Thanks for watching. Comments down below. Come say hi in Misfit Mining, and I'll talk to you in the next video.